Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and I'm here for What's Happening, a discussion of the current events of the day. I'm also joined today by my colleague, Eric Agnero, who uh, has given me a fresh perspective on the news always and about the politics of the world because he shares a perspective from, I believe, from Africa, uh, which has a totally different perspective on the news than than basically the Europeans <laughs> or the Americans. And that's for a lot of reasons. I believe it's probably because of the colonial status that many of the African countries have suffered in the past. So I just wanted to talk a little bit with you and you want to talk with me about the current state of what? The war. Or, right. And the world, correct. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I believe, about what's happening in Ukraine still. So what's going on? Yeah, in Ukraine we were you know, surprised that the U.S. will send uh, cluster bombs mm -hmm. to Ukraine. Why? Why is that so, so surprising uh, to people? Because, you know, cluster bombs have been, you know, uh, denounced across the planet mm -hmm. because, you know, it targets, yet, it targets military, uh, but mostly are dangerous for the civilians mm -hmm. because, you know, they don't detonate. All of them. They're like mines, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they transform themselves into mines. Once the main, main um, ammunition has exploded, it spreads like smaller bombs that, you know, uh, I mean, in the most, you know, uh, reliable case, you have like maybe 70% of these bombs that detonate and then the rest stay there as mine, potential mines for, mm. you know, the civilians. And the whole international community, you know, looks at uh, cluster bomb as barbaric, and mm -hmm. you know, there's even a treaty against the use of cluster there, bombs. Yes, which you said recently, the United States, the United States, or, or, Russia. or Russia. It's like uh, I, I understand because these two superpowers, uh, probably China, also, you know, uh, regard them as mines, mm -hmm. and then in that case, you know, the U.S. is still you know, uh, uh, uses or at least, you know, keeps the right to use mines in conflict. So, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, people around the world were, were uphold, like, how can, you know, uh, a great nation like the U.S., mm -hmm. great democracy, mm -hmm. great republic like the U.S., you mm -hmm. know, go back to, uh, to these, you know... Uh, Not go back. I mean, the United States is also at this moment in history an empire. Yes, it was a great republic that was created, as we talked about earlier in the day, uh, by the American Revolution when we overthrew monarchy and princes hmm. and princesses <laughs> like yourself, uh, a prince, um, and established a republic where everybody was equal under the law. But that was a long time ago. And at that time, the creation of a republic, I think, was a, a virtually anti-imperial, anti-empire. We overthrew the greatest empire on earth at the time was England. And in a way, therefore, we renounced having our own empire. But that all has changed. changed yeah. um, I believe it changed with the Spanish-American War in 1898 when the United States uh, sought empire, essentially in Asia and in uh, Latin America. But the, the American empire is coming to its end. Well, you know. wait a minute. First, it had an empire, yeah. which I don't think that most Americans would admit. Mm. But we had an empire. Mm. Um, and that empire was deepened, I think, after World War II, mm -hmm. when the Cold War was declared essentially against Russia. Russia, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so, and what did that lead to? That led to NATO in the first place. So if we're talking about the war currently in Ukraine, we're also talking about the war of NATO. NATO, yeah, I guess. Correct? You know, yeah. Which was established in 1947-48. NATO is an alliance. Who is it allied about? NATO is a military alliance allied against Russia, Russia. always. Yeah. It began as an alliance against the Soviet Union. It didn't end when the Soviet Union collapsed, mm -hmm. and it has uh, expanded its. Yeah, and then it went even beyond, even even beyond uh, Russia. It went to uh, to um, um, Gaddafi's country, Libya. It yeah, was Libya. like yeah. So NATO is kind of going everywhere, trying to, and then it's the case now, trying to con 
to, you know, to uh, uh, counter the influence of the new powers, Which China are, yeah. and, 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 and Russia. And, and Russia has always been a power, but, you know, in, in this... China new, has too for a long yeah. time, but... So, uh, to me, uh, sending these ammunitions are either a sign that, you know, they, uh, you know, the U.S., I mean, NATO and Ukraine is losing ground against Russia. It's losing the war mm -hmm. because it's like kind of a desperate, I don't know if it's a desperate move, but, you know, I mean, uh, to go to that extent means maybe that they're losing the war. Or, you know, it's really, you know, Russia out at any cost. Well, or both <laughs> at the same time, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay, so it seems to me that um, if this war has been portrayed mm. in our country mm. and probably in Europe, but as a war to save Ukraine. Mm. But there's another whole theory that's a counter-narrative, mm. correct? It seems to me. And you pointed it out to me by pointing out to me a long time ago that the nations of the world, the black and brown nations, Latin America, um, Africa, and Asia see this war as a, as a proxy war of the United States primarily against Russia. Yeah. And is that correct in your yeah, view? That's how, yeah, that's the, how they see it. And so much so that, you know, when uh, uh, there was this uh, uh, uprise from uh, the uh, Wagner group. Yeah. People thought that in Africa, you know, the uh, the efforts by uh, some African nations to get their independence from France and the Western powers through an alliance with Russia mm -hmm. and China will collapse as well because you know they thought that uh, uh, Russia was going to to plunge into chaos. Right. And, but it looks like Vladimir Putin won this one. <laughs> won this one. And then people are still asking, were there really a coup or it was just a plot? Okay, let's look at that a little bit. Okay, so anyway, so that's what we see the war as. And that is shared by many peoples of the world, but not the white European nations, nor the United States. This war, in many people's views, in the other parts of the world, Latin America, Asia, and Africa, mm -hmm. is a war between the United States and, and Russia, Russia. Cause against Russia, mm -hmm. which is a, a being fought in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Fought in Ukraine at the great expense of the Ukrainian people, but that it is a war, essentially, that NATO, at least half caused themselves by trying to expand NATO into Russia. Okay. But we've heard our president say, or I have, that the war is not about Ukraine anymore. It's about to topple Putin, to get rid of Putin, mm. and to have regime change in Russia. Okay. Our president has said that. Yeah. All right, so, but you're talking about something else. Mm -hmm. What we're now talking about is this Wagner or Ra Wagner yeah. group. What yeah. is it? And let's explain this as well as we it's, can. It's hard to explain. I, you, sometimes you ask yourself if Wagner is not like a, 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 a segment of the, the Russian army. Yeah, but yeah, that's not that's, real, not yet. That, not yet. A group of mercenaries that are, you know, uh, 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 managed by uh, P uh, Vladimir Putin's good friend until... <laughs> what was What's his name? I can't pronounce it. Uh, Pri Priogson or something? <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah. The head of the Wagner group. The head, the head of... And as far as I could tell, the Wagner group is a group of mercenaries the, yeah. that operate on behalf of Russia, Russia. all over the world. Like uh, many mercenary groups have done on behalf of the U.S. Right. You know, like Black uh, Hawk. Yeah, yeah, like around the world. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a common practice. By, of mercenaries. Yeah, yeah by uh, big paid, army, yeah, soldiers. paid soldiers, you know. But uh, here, uh, we're not sure if uh, these guys were rebelling against Putin or, or were... Or in reality, in reality had were a deal getting, with him. <laughs> a deal with him to get closer to Kiev. Right. And while, well, you know, the... But in any case, you know, uh, using uh, a proxy like Ukraine... And then today, the idea of having cluster bombs over there would be even dangerous for the, the, the civilians. Horrifying. So, yeah, so it means that, you know, a whole country, you know, millions of people are being sacrificed for war. We're not sure that, you know, the NATO will win this war 
it doesn't look like they're winning. So, well, but to the mainstream media, they are proposing that they're winning in this Ukraine. In other words, this counteroffensive is going somewhere. However, if you look beneath the common narrative, you see that it hasn't done much no. at all, that it hasn't taken back the territory. Okay, but I wanted to ask you something. So let's go back to the Wagner group. Okay. okay. That group is a bunch of militaries, uh, mercenaries, supported by Russia, I Russia, guess. Yeah. They operate in Africa too, correct? Mm -hmm. And they operate in competition with, for instance, the French army? Yes. Um, in your country of Ivory in, Coast? No, in the Ivory Coast, no, because the Ivory Coast is still a stronghold of, you know, the uh, French post-colonial empire, yeah. empire over there. But Mali, Mali uh, uh, got rid of uh, the French soldiers. They called French soldiers like a few years ago to help them deal with uh, uh, terrorism? terrorists. Okay. And then finally, they realized that the French were not doing Just much. Just bad. <laughs> probably. <laughs> and probably were, you know, uh, were in collusion with the, with the terrorists themselves. Yeah. So uh, they decided to uh, dr it. yeah, drift away from uh, France they, and then call upon uh, Russia. And Russia probably knowing that they will be uh, involved in a massive, you know, uh, operation in, uh, in Ukraine, probably send the Wagner Group. But the Wagner Group is also present in Central Africa Republic. Right. Yes. Right. So uh, gradually, these uh, mercenaries or uh, these soldiers from Russia, paid, paid right. anyway, are you know, spreading across right. the continent of uh, Africa. Africa. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the United States is opposed to them. Of course, the okay. United States is opposed to that. France also is opposed to that. All the European nations as well. But you know, what could you do? I mean, these countries are sovereign, and so now they're using pressure, like uh, in the case of uh, of South Africa, for example, which is a different uh, 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 thing. South Africa is member of the BRICS. Right. Okay. So BRICS, though, is. This Brazil, Russia, China, India, India. and so South Africa. South Africa. So uh, um, South Africa is expected to host uh, uh, a summit mm -hmm. to which Vladimir Putin was supposed to, <laughs> to take part. But, you know, the, the, the Americans and the Europeans are putting pressure on uh, South Africa not to, 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 or to arrest him. Right. Or to arrest him because there's an arrest warrant out for that guy, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, strong competition, and 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 since you know the le nerf de la guerre, like uh, le nerf, le nerf de la guerre, is the nerve of the okay. war is military might. Mm -hmm. the, these African countries went to uh, to see uh, Russia to help them. So uh, it's tough right now, and 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 then I don't know if they will deport this um, proxy war in Africa mm -hmm. against Russia. Would there be any confrontation on the African uh, continent? Against Russia? Against Russia. Against doubt Russia. Ru yeah, I, I, doubt I doubt it. it. But it is occurring, yeah. of course, in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you go back to the, to the Wagner group, what happened recently was this group of mercenaries mm -hmm. seemed to turn on Putin mm -hmm. in Russia, yeah. correct? And they marched against Moscow. Uh -huh. But what happened? <laughs> First of all, they did not succeed in toppling Putin. No. Okay. And Putin simply moved them to Belarus. But today, right? yeah, he moved them to Belarus. And that's near Kiev. Yeah. But, but even today, you know, the, the news, I mean, that, you know, Vladimir so, Putin okay. met with uh, yeah, but Primovic. What, so what is the theory? Yes, they had a meeting today. To me, the theory is was all this was like a, a strategy, a of war strategy of, of Putin. Yeah. And he has been from the beginning. When I saw that guy, you know, Which uh, one? Uh, 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 Pri <laughs> yeah, the the Wagner, uh, you know, group uh, boss, you know, uh, uh, criticizing the Kremlin and so and so I I knew that it wasn't possible for someone from the same house in the middle of a war to do that I'm pretty sure the 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 uh, intention was 
to have the enemy drop the guard, thinking that Russia will be in turmoil and you know maybe precipitate the counteroffensive. Mm -hmm. But to me, it was clearly uh, a maneuver, uh, yeah, maneuver on the part of Putin. Putin. Okay, he's no dumbbell, right? Oh, this guy is. <laughs> I don't know if the is a mastermind in uh, chess. Oh, true. I forgot oh, about yeah, that. The so, Russians with their chess. Yeah. That's what it appeared to me as well. Mm. There is some evidence to support that theory that it was a strategy of Putin to just to move his troops closer, closer to, to Kiev, Kiev. via Be Belarus. Right. But we'll see, I we'll guess. See, but, I the, guess. but the proof, or at least some evidence, exists that those two guys met today. Yeah, they or met yesterday. today, and then there's no. We don't. We don't hear about no uh, confrontation. Know, confrontation. He's not in jail. He's not in jail, so it looks like uh, they <laughs> they they succeeded in fooling the West. Well, is that true or not? What do you think? We'll see. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to discuss with you is there's great talk today about NATO, which mm -hmm. is meeting, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And there's all these deals being made. Yeah. With Sweden, Sweden's going to break its neutrality of centuries yeah. and enter NATO. What are they doing? They must be out of their mind. Do you suppose that the Swedes want that, the uh, Swedish people? I need to look into uh, that, but I'm not sure they want that. I'm pretty well, sure that's happening? like it's, Why uh, are they it's, doing it's that? NATO has put pressure on, uh, on, uh, on Sweden. But also, maybe, you know, the fact that Vladimir Putin was a little, you know... He's been really rough with Sweden. Yeah, right. so, no, uh, no, they have been. It's, maybe it's in the best interest to find a place where to, to, to be. But, but, but it seems to me nations like Sweden, and right now Turkey mm -hmm. as well, are counting on NATO to beat Russia. That's not so clear, is it, that the war is going to end favorably uh, for the U.S. and NATO? Uh, I mean, what? Uh, Turkey. For yeah. Turkey, I know that is just right. a way of, you know, uh, yeah, EU. yeah, and also, yeah, yeah, bargaining. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, Turk, the Turks, they know that uh, they, they they don't count necessarily on a, on a victory of NATO, but you know because they have good relationship with uh, Russia as well. They do. They so to. Uh, they pose themselves as, you know, the last resort if there's, <laughs> there's a war, a declared war between... Uh, there's not going to be. Yeah. So uh, for Sweden, I don't know exactly what they, they're doing, but probably uh, uh, very much, you know, pressure from, uh, from America. It's astounding that they're giving up their neutrality, which they've held on to for, even throughout the Second World War, they were neutral. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, I knew that. And, yeah. and that, all of a sudden, they're giving it up. Finland, too, right? Yeah. To join NATO. To join NATO. Remember, uh, NATO began as an alliance against Russia. Russia. Russia had already been defeated. No, Russia no. won World War II, but they were, they were flattened uh -huh. anyway, right? Well, we'll see, but uh, it's it's uh, it's also uh, for NATO. It's a way of survival, so uh, it's a way of maintaining. Why? Uh, because of this big influence of China, and 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 because to me, Russia is not is not so much the problem. Not it's, to people like yeah, you and me, but China, China, might be. China, yeah. mm -hmm. and 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 but you know. You can't, you can't take on China if you still have Russia around. So mm -hmm. the weaker Russia is, maybe the easier it will be for the, the Western world to tackle, I mean, to take on China. I can't take on China. Can we? But at least, you know, uh, bargain more because China will be like soon a uh, uh, gargantua. I, thought, I think it probably is already, already correct? Yeah. Except the United States is messing in China too, always, right? I don't know why people think that there they can be a war. At all? At all, because, you know, all, whatever we produce here is, is done in China. I mean, mm. <laughs> whatever we consume here is produced in China. China, China has like so much... Including antibiotics? Yes, yeah, so uh, how, can you, how can you even go... Uh, the, 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 we, we, we've seen 
the state, st uh, I mean, the Secretary of State tried to go to China. Mm -hmm. they, we've, we've they didn't even invite him, did they? <laughs> they've seen also, we've seen also the Secretary of Commerce mm -hmm. trying to uh, uh, massage the Chinese so that, you know, they can preserve. But it's difficult to preserve good, I mean, relationship, you know, commercial relationship while you, you, you're waging a war. But the, but the thing about China that's so uh, strange to me is that the United States weaponizes Taiwan, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Gives all these weapons to... Taiwan is part oh. of China. At the same time that we give them all these weapons, the weapons are directed against China. It's almost as if the Chinese are funding Texas. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And yet, Biden says repeatedly, we have a one-China policy. Okay, yeah. And you obviously know what that yeah, means, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, after World War II, there were two Chinas, yeah. right? Taiwan right. and, China. and yeah. Beijing. Beijing, yeah. And the United States refused to recognize Mao Zedong and mm -hmm. the communist government, only recognized Taiwan, Taiwan. but that changed at yeah. some point. Yeah. And we have supposedly decent relations with the uh, Republic of China, yeah. except that we give weapons to one of its provinces. How can that be? How can any are people have lost their mind? Do they really think that we would be we would tolerate such supplying of one of our states? Yeah, but how about know, Alaska? China can give all these stuff to Alaska. I mean, big superpowers need to keep some leverages. What's the leverage? I, if you have uh, uh, Taiwan, you can. But we don't have Taiwan. But at least you know we don't leave it. I mean, we we are uh, like the U.S. is. Uh, uh, like a pain in Taiwan, I mean, in, uh, uh, for China by supporting uh, Taiwan, at least, you know, you, you weaken a little bit your adversary. It's international relationship, madam. <laughs> yeah, but you, yes, but it has serious consequences. And you just said something mm. that I think most Americans would find astounding, that the American empire is losing. The American empire is in... A crisis. I don't think most Americans think that, but I do. Yeah, I do too. And then it's enormous. I, well, I like this country. I don't. Yeah. Ca I don't want it to be an imperial power. Yeah. I, but I like the republic. I like it if we could stay a republic yeah. and get rid of this empire. But as that empire implodes, mm -hmm. what do you suppose is happening? There's absolute chaos in this country. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how connected it is, except that all these monies go from this country to places like Ukraine, mm -hmm. to Zelensky, in terms of weapons. Maybe the, the country would be well off the day, you know, America, what? maybe the country would be better. I mean, the day America would not have to uh, spend money around the planet, but take care of, you know, Home. the folks. Yeah. Okay. Tuck, I think Tucker Carlson is, you and I both despise <laughs> Tucker Carlson. We admitted that mortal sin, right? Yeah. He, he said of his politics around the war is what I think Americans should think about. And that is, ask yourself, is this war in the interest of the United States? Is it? That's a good question. Is it in the interest? Is it? I mean, we all know we have bleeding hearts for the Ukrainian people. Mm -hmm. I, for instance, yeah. have the same kind of sympathy with the Russian people, mm -hmm. however. Yeah. Okay, so I'm a person who's against war, period. However, rather than looking at this in a sympathetic, emotional fashion, mm -hmm. shouldn't we be asking ourselves, is this in the interest of our country? And what would you say? I mean, you're not yet an American citizen, but what is your thought? No, I think it's... Uh, but you like it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, the, it's probably in the, the best interest of the U.S. in terms of, you know, uh, uh, containing China and Russia. Why is that in the interest of the United States? It's not in the interest of me or you. It's not in the interest of the American people. Tell me whose interest it's then in. We, then, then we need to ask the American people what, do, what they really And what really do you think, think they would do? You think if there was a referendum, should we, we be sending all these weapons to a guy named Zelensky? We should be sending him cluster bombs and tanks and weapons and all of our surplus mm. weapons and all of our money? I'm not sure the American people would like that. 
What would, how would they vote, do you suppose? Yeah, they, they would vote against. But it depends also. It's uh, highly political. I mean, you have uh, the, uh, the Democrats have made like this war. Also themselves over yeah, this I mean, war. So, uh, what? But there's no referendum. Yeah, right. Of course not. There wasn't around Vietnam. You were here during no, Vietnam, no. but I was. Yeah. And I would, I would say the same thing. I was a high school teacher at that yeah. time at a Catholic high school. And I remember asking my students, mm. you want to go? They were being drafted out mm. of my classroom. Mm. They didn't want to go. Nobody did. Then, then to be against the war in Ukraine would be like No, no, I'm, I'm asking, do you suppose that if it was put on the ballot, mm. people would say, oh, sure, let's, let's, <laughs> let's uh, send him all uh, of our money? No, I don't think so. How would it go? It would go. And that's uh, why we don't have a referendum. That's why there's no referendum. Right? Yeah. Why so? Because, because the superpowers, the people who govern us in Washington want this war. And I, don't, I have no idea. But they have wanted war with Russia since 1917 when the Bolsheviks took over Russia, right? The Bolsheviks mean the communists. Yeah, the communists. Yeah. But prior to that, why do you think that there's always been this thought that it's a good thing to go to war with Russia or Africa. Why? Why these huge, big land masses? What do they offer to the, to the United States resources? Oh, uh, probably, you know, uh, the military complex is uh, making money. I'm of... sure of that. But why do our political leaders support that? What is it about, I mean, let's face it, Russia is not only a European country, mm -hmm. it's also spreads so, yeah, into yeah, Asia. Asia yeah. And it's very, if you think about it, undeveloped. Mm. What does America want with it? Same as it does in all wars. Resources. So, resources. Yeah, uh, Russia is uh, like, it's like uh, an untapped. What? Yeah. Ra yeah, you know, region. So uh, resources. And that is that true in Africa? Oh, yeah, big time, you know, in Africa. And also, you know, prestige, you know. Sometimes they don't get much. But, you know, it's just like uh, a matter of international prestige or, you know, just, you know, don't get, you know, uh, or influence, I should, I should say. It's good to have a group of nations in Africa that could vote for you, like a herd. Vote for you where? Like at the United Nations or, you Never know, be, remember, <laughs> you know, they were counting on the African countries to, to vote in favor of, the, you know, a resolution condemning Russia, they didn't. They didn't. So it's always good to have uh, herds of countries that you can control that could, you know, uh, uh, vote for you. At, uh, I want to know one country mm. in the developing world that even supports the sanctions. Can you think of one? Uh, the, the good uh, lackeys of... Like who are they? <laughs> uh, probably, you know, uh, probably. Ivory Coast. <laughs> because yeah. the, the Ivory Coast, Senegal, maybe, because these countries are, you know, uh, uh, these countries are districts of, uh, of, <laughs> of France. France. Yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, all the Francophone countries. And probably. how about the Anglophone? Oh, the Anglophone are not for this war. How come? That's they must, because, you know, they don't have, like... Uh, like Kenya. Like Kenya uh, might have some, you know, links to uh, Great Britain and uh, the Western, the Anglo-Saxon world, but it's still uh, not like under so much influence as, you know, the French, I mean, the Ivorians and Senegalese could be under France. So, and then in, uh, in the Anglophone countries, you have a, a, a m more of a, sp you know, a spirit of, uh, resistance. of uh, your resistance than, than in the French colonies where, you know, they've been assimilated totally. Yeah? Yeah, the British came, they left the local, you know, deal with their own problems, but the French were under the skin <laughs> of, you know, they were every, everywhere. So uh, wow. these countries cannot do anything if Mama or Papa France is not there. <laughs> wow. Except that, in general, when you were last in Ivory Coast, or one of the times when we first got to know each other, you pointed out that you saw Putin signs everywhere. Oh, yeah, everywhere. the people. The yeah. people on the street. But, you know, the governments, of course. And then it comes to here. Mm -hmm. The people, the yeah. American people. I know that, you know, they, uh, 
they don't like they don't like what is going on in Ukraine. They don't like how the Ukrainians are. Somalia, yeah, people yeah. don't even know. But definitely, if you go, if you dig deeper, you ask them. They won't be for a war yeah. or, or, you know, a permanent state of war that depletes, you know, the resources, right. kill people. <laughs> you know, it's like when when you see when you see the news, oh, America is providing cluster bombs. It's like you are agreeing to have civilians. Right. You know, massacred, massacred kids, kids, you know. Right. And we just haven't even talked of, about yes. our support of a country like Israel. Israel. You know, so just for the sake of getting rid of Putin? Well, that's what, that, what, that's what they're after. We'll see. We'll see. But we'll he's see. no fool, and as you point out, he's a master at chess. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's enough, I guess, for this yeah. month. But we'll be back next month, right? Thank you. Thank you.